video, we'll look at the chemistry of baking bread using the five following ingredients. Flour, water, yeast, sugar and salt. Firstly, I'm going to add 500 grams of flour. All flours are composed largely from starch and protein. Wheat flour, which is used for bread, has a very high level of a class of proteins known as glutens, usually between 8 and 14%. These proteins are the key constituent of the flour for bread production. Secondly, 300 ml of tepid water is added. On addition of water, the proteins in the flour hydrate to form glutens, a viscoelastic matrix which holds the starch granules that make up the bulk of the flour. Gluten can be separated into two broad classes, the gliadins and the glutenins. The gliadins. A typical wheat variety can have up to 40 different gliadins whose molecular weights are generally between 28,000 and 55,000. The glutenins. These can have an overall molecular weight exceeding 2 million due to their multi-protein macropolymer structure. Glutens, which are insoluble, are dominated by hydrophobic amino acids, glutamine in particular. Glutamine has a strong tendency to form hydrogen bonds, indicated by the grey lines, between two protein strands, indicated by the orange lines, as the dough is stretched. This is one of the main reasons for the physical structure and behaviour of gluten. Next, 14 grams of yeast is added. Yeast is a fungus which helps to make the bread rise. As yeast ferments the sugar, CO2 and ethanol are produced. These sugars have been liberated from hydrated starch molecules in the flour using amylase enzymes. Next, one tablespoon of sugar is added. Sugar undergoes Maillard reactions which add flavour and form the bran crust on bread. The Maillard reaction is essentially a series of non-enzymatic chemical reactions between amino acids and reducing sugars. These reactions proceed rapidly between 140 and 165 degrees Celsius. This reaction will now be looked at in further detail. The first step of the Maillard reaction is the reaction of a reducing sugar, in this case glucose, with an amino acid. As seen, the carbonyl group of the glucose reacts with the amino group of the amino compound, producing N-substituted glycosylamine and water. The glycosylamine is an unstable intermediate and so readily loses water. The product undergoes rearrangement and then ring closing to form the amidori compound 1-amino-1-deoxy-D-fructopyranose. The open chain amidori compound can undergo further dehydration producing the 2,3-enol this then undergoes deamination, producing the dicarbonyl intermediate. The intermediates are then degraded into the compounds which provide some of the aroma, flavour and colour for the bread. These compounds include furfural and hydroxymethyl furfural. Finally, half a tablespoon of salt is added. Salt ions shield gluten's charges from one another whilst enabling the protein molecules to approach more closely, thus giving a stronger and stable dough. Once all the ingredients have been added, they are thoroughly mixed together and the bread is left to prove. During this time, CO2 bubbles form within the dough and the dough rises to twice its original size. This extended fermentation time develops flavour. The dough is then placed in a preheated oven at 180 degrees Celsius. This is then baked for 25 minutes until golden brown. It is removed from the oven, left to cool and then ready to eat. 